which is one of the critiques I have. I felt like I should have been in this episode. I felt like yep. Cisco would have had like um, a moment to have a conversation with his son about you know just mm-hmm. the appreciation of fatherhood or whatever it was that he wanted to talk about. I felt like there was a moment that they missed there. Um, well, also, which, who yeah. better who better to talk to a kid than another kid? Exactly. I mean, they had Molly. You know what's what's this this sixteen year old kid going to do playing with a, a <laughs> toddler? Talking. He's like, oh yeah, he's been playing yeah. with Molly all day. I was like, she's in four. She's like three or four, right? <laughs> she's like four years old. Yeah, <laughs> playing with her or babysitting her. <laughs> mm. Yeah, that was kind of interesting that they said that too. They played it over into the Keiko O'Brien household, and they made it more about that. Um, instead, they could have, I thought. And they missed the opportunity to have Jake involved in, and have the, the Cisco Jake conversations kind of emerge out of it. Um, but nonetheless, they did um, do a good job tackling the issue um, about adoption and, and parent, you know, raising a kid, parenting, you know. Mm-hmm. And a lot of these issues got brought up in this episode, which I it thought was, were good. It was a very. Uh racially charged episode like there was all that there was a lot of like just kind of like duet was uh last season right. it was about yeah. it was about racism it was about um not just that the bajorans raised this cardassian boy to hate his own people but on top of that it it really i mean i've been saying this since the beginning i don't think people realize but Miles O'Brien, for how much we love him, they made him a racist against Cardassians. Like he's always like, ah, these damn Cardies. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, yeah. And which was interesting because in the scene they had him face to face with the boy, and he's like, hey, what do you think perfect. about the Cardassians? And he's like, mm-hmm. uh, well, you know. And I just was flat. They should have flashed to all the times that he was speaking about the Cardassians. <laughs> a in montage. The past episodes. <laughs> a montage. Like, let me think. What do I think about him? You know. Or as I Aaron that, would call it, a hue montage. <laughs> montage. Yeah, I thought that would have been great, man. I, I think that, uh, you know, they, they, they touched on all of those issues, like you said, uh, with race um, being one of the main factors and, you know, how do you, you raise a child and what do you teach a child? Uh, there was one line in which the Bajoran father of the boy said to... Uh, <sighs> Um, Garrick and Bashir, I'm not going to apologize for telling him the truth. I think he told that to Cisco. Mm. He says, I'm not apologizing for telling him the truth. And that was kind of a poignant line for me because, you know, they, they were asking him, what did you tell this boy? What did you tell him, you know, um, to, to make him dislike Cardassians. And, um, He's like, I just told them the truth, what they really did to us. And that's really, that's kind of an interesting thing in itself, telling the truth. When do you tell the truth? Is it appropriate? You know, mm. and mm-hmm. how and where. And, yeah. and, and also the truth is extremely subjective. Um, Whose truth is, right? Is yeah, what you mean? it's kind of like if you watch these, uh, these true crime dramas or anything like that, you know, like the real documentaries, like you'll notice both parties, you know, the the defendant and the, uh, whatever it is, the accuser, they're both pretty much saying the same thing that happened, but just from their own point of view is a little bit different. You know, they like, you know, they, they say, yeah, of course I did that, you know, cause she was acting like this and she's saying, you know, well, of course I did that cause he was acting like that, you know? And, and as Garrick said, which was really important, uh, he mentions that at the very, very end, he says something to the effect of, you know, uh, I don't, I don't usually tell the truth because, you know, the truth is subjective. Let me see if I wrote that, that exact quote down. Um, yeah, yeah, that, that was one of the things that was popping up is the truth. And, you know, I thought that, uh, Siddig did a great job. I think this was his best performance thus far in my, really? in my period, you know, estimation. I felt like his, his performance was really good. Mm-hmm. Um, he played his, his soul nuances in, in a way that I was, that was very believable. Um, I like the interchange between him and Cisco and ops when he interrupts Cisco to talk to Goldicott. And, and those, 
those looks were just amazing. <laughs> those they little go some comedy in there, man. You got uh, they <laughs> did, they did, yeah. That was they really did. good. They gave him some comedy, exactly. Uh, he said, "No, this is the highlight of my day." That was you know? the best line. <laughs> But don't make it. Don't make sure it doesn't happen again. I was you know? saving that for a little later. But let's see. He says, uh, uh, "You know, he's oh, what do he say?" Oh, he goes, "Don't apologize. It's been the highlight of my day." Yeah, <laughs> like it's been he's the so highlight. Sarcastic. He's so and sarcastic. Yeah. He made another sarcastic uh, quip when uh, Bashir shows up to his place at two in the morning, and he's like. He's like, oh, hey, sorry to wake you up, but I just need to go and borrow a, a car real quick. Uh, oh, yeah, I need a runabout. I need a runabout, yeah. To go to, to, go to Bajor with, uh, with Garrick real quick. And Cisco says, of course. Will Is one be all? enough? Yeah, yeah, will one be enough? <laughs> Is there anything else I could do for you? <laughs> you know, that reminded me of, uh, it, for those of you that have watched Friday, the, the awesome 90s comedy with Ice Cube and Chris Tucker, and uh, it's like that girl of uh, Felicia, where the whole by Felicia thing came from. They're like, mm -hmm. he's like, Chris is like, what do you want anyway, man? You know, and he go, and she says, oh, I need to borrow your car right quick. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, I just eh, yeah. borrow a runabout. No big deal. Yeah, I just need to run about real quick. Uh, no, I thought that was and there was another uh, moment there, just a, sl a slight moment, but it uh, Bashir comes and interrupts the the I guess the adjudication that Cisco is doing for the kid, and uh, Gold Ducat looks over at Cisco and he says, it "Appears you lost control." Yeah, and he he looks back and says, "Yeah, it does appear I lost." Control. <laughs> yeah, he does. He goes, uh, Ducat says, I, "I quoted that one too." He says, "This is irrelevant and insulting, Commander. You have lost control here." And so yeah, I'm like, yeah, I agree. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Which is which is another like a subtle element of uh, Cisco's leadership style that I really enjoy. There are moments where he takes the back seat and he allows other characters to um, get their shine on, if you you know, if you will, and um, and that just shows to me a, a kind of leadership that I like personally, where it's it's not a leadership style where somebody knows everything and they shut you down and don't allow other people's input. It's the kind of leadership style where it's like, yeah, okay, I, I have the ability to do that, but I'm going to withhold that because I believe that you have something to, you know, a value to add to this discussion. Mm -hmm. And that's, what's, that's what Cisco, to me, does a really good job of, um, really balancing the hard with the soft. Um, yeah. yeah. And there's a, there's, a real, there's a real confidence in a true leader being able to say, yeah, I messed up or yeah, I might be wrong or yeah, I lost control, you know, rather than somebody that's insecure and will never admit. I haven't anything. lost control. I'm yeah. in control of this whole you thing. Lost you control, you buddy. lost control and you're out of order. Yeah. yeah. No, that's, um, that's I, a great, it's a great quality in a leader. Absolutely. Yeah, I think so. And, and so I thought everybody, you know, played those elements really well. I also have to put a, another shout out to Gold Dukat who just does this really I mean, it's just, he oozes this menacing asshole that you just want to punch in his face, right? Yeah. At, and he's, asshole, it, yeah. Yeah, but he's also, like, really good and confident, and, and, and his leadership is also not questioned, you know? His authority is not something that you question. It's something that you can see, and you're like, okay, this guy is clearly the boss here. And he doesn't give ground, but he sometimes will, you know, acquiesce. Mm -hmm. But he's that doesn't make him any less tough, you know. Yeah, but he's so deliciously slimy. Like he's, he, just, yeah, he's, you love to hate him. He's the guy yeah. that you love to hate, which makes him just such a superb actor because that's what is, you know, that's what we're supposed to be feeling when we see him. So he's getting the job done like tremendously well. Um, I thought it was funny when he turned around and walked out of the whole thing. <laughs> He's like, and he gave right. Derek a look. <laughs> he gave Derek look. the long, hard look. They looked at each other. I thought he was going to swing on him almost. You know, it was, it was like one of those moves. <laughs> and Garrick's just like, hmm. Uh, hmm. Smiley face. Got you. I won. I won. <laughs> Garrick's like, I haven't said a word. <laughs> He's like, all I did was, uh, was listen to Bashir connect the dots, you know, in his mind. Yeah, and we also get to see Garrick as being this 
um, really smart person, you know, um, when he breaks into the computer system to look up the database to find out, you know, which, which children have been there and to find the name of this kid. Um, he shows a really high level of intelligence while he's mm -hmm. going through that process. He sh he's very competent in that way. And he's also um, endearing. You know, you, you, you kind of like, oh, man, I like this guy. He, he looks like the bad guy, but he's doing the right things. And, it's, yeah. you know. And uh, the thing is with, uh, with Andy Robinson and Mark Alimo, like Cardassians are so rich of characters for, for good acting. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. I find myself being mesmerized with being captivated by like every line they say every line they say as an actor i watch it i go oh that was such an interesting way to say that you know like even if the line's just two words like oh yes they'll be like oh yes or something like that you know i've noticed uh bashir also does that uh, more so in later years sometimes you only have two words sometimes bashir's line is yes sir but he has to like do something with that. So if he's annoyed, he goes, yes, sir. Or something like that. You know, it's like yeah. you're doing something with those two lines. And, and that's what yeah. these Cardassian actors do so well is they yeah. really chew it up. You know, they really do a lot with a little. Yeah. And I thought the father of this Cardassian kid who guest starred on this episode did a, a really great job as a guest star. Um, once again, we have such a high level of quality when it comes to our guest stars, right? Mm-hmm. Um, we're always finding ourselves uh, mesmerized by the performances of this guy that's a one-day player or, you know, maybe just there for the, for the week. Totally. And, and you might not see them again, but yet they leave these great performances behind and it allows all the other actors to kind of shine in different ways. Um, you know, but yeah, noticed, the, the father was great, I thought. You know, I noticed, by the way, uh, a little nod to our boy uh, Aaron Eisenberg was there was something that reminded me of him and i was like okay this cardassian kid is supposed to be 12 years old it's obviously a short 25 year old <laughs> it's like it's, <laughs> a, it's a short they're like hey it worked for nog we gotta just if you gotta he's got he's getting the makeup on yeah exactly can, it could be a 30 year old dude with kids yeah, what do yeah. we care another know? person that i thought would be well placed in this episode nog yeah. because you know Jake once again nog. it felt like it was our age demographic how great that they were dealing been, with how great would it have been if jake and nog meet this cardassian kid and the cardassian kid kind of tells them the situation and they're like oh that's weird and he leaves and jake and nog are on opposite sides of that fence you know we're like right we're like nog is saying well no you know cardassian should stay yeah, or something like yeah, that yeah he should saying, stay with his new parents and and i'm saying well but that's his father and you know and Yes, and exactly. That would have that would have been a great little exchange, and you know, like I said, you have uh, you have an age demographic that's relative to the kids on the show. So you would think that the younger kids on the show would have an access and opportunity to be involved in the storyline, and that's what mm -hmm. I felt like was one of the big elements missing. Um, and even when they brought it to the O'Briens, um, Molly wasn't even featured, so you didn't even see her. It was just, yeah, we didn't just, see. Her. Uh, no, it was, it was just talked about it through exposition. Yeah. So they just talked and today and they were over there playing. So we didn't even get that. Um, and I thought it was a perfect opportunity to do something like that. The other thing that actually jumped out at me, which I thought went unanswered in this episode, was the kids that they found at the orphanage on Bajor. When they found those kids mm -hmm. and they came out and, and they were like, are you here to take us? I felt so bad for those kids. And then they just let it go. They're like, all right, no, we're not That's here it. for you guys. It's you just know. another uh, Kyle Paca moment of like, well, what happened to those kids? And they're like, eh, <laughs> you fill in the blank. <laughs> Figure it out. Yeah, something <laughs> like that. They we're lived dealing... happily ever after or they all got <laughs> slaughtered somewhere in the middle. Whatever. Something, something. I thought they would give us something that would just say, hey, all right, well, then we need to go back to that camp and get all the kids and, and, and clear this mess up because this has been going on too long or whatever. And, you know, something to that effect I thought was going to happen. You know, you're right. Uh, that's just like two lines at the end of the episode. Cisco right. could say, you know, and I understand that there are a lot of children or, or Bashir says, 
ca- uh, commander, before we go, I just want to let you know that blah, 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 blah. We saw and, other kids there and, and we need to find out who they are. Yeah. And, and Cisco who their parents says, are. you know, see to it that they're given options to something. And then we go, ah, closed book. Yeah. Any objections, Ducat? No. And he walks out. <laughs> <laughs> or know? Ducat would say something like, even if I did have objections, would you listen and the door's already closing on them? <laughs> They're like that. Exactly. And that would, that would now check off that box for me of like poor kids just come out of the thing and you, you know, you, you don't just turn your back and say, all right, well, too bad for you guys. We're only here for the one kid that we got mm. and all you guys got to deal with it. Some of those kids looked younger than eight and they were talking about an eight year um, time span. So it was like, well, where did these other kids come from? Right. Yeah, or maybe you could have just they could have just closed it when they say, Are you coming to save us or something like that? And and Garrick we'll be says, back. And Garrick says, Are you the son of somebody important? <laughs> no. <laughs> then why are you talking to me? <laughs> then I would have laughed and it would have been hilarious. <laughs> and then uh, once again the mark the mark gets checked off. So yeah, yeah. I, I like I like the way you, you put a spin on that. <laughs> are you the son of somebody important? No. And of course Bashir says something like, You're a jerk, and yeah. and the Garrick says, Thank you, my dear doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Just plain simple Garrick. Yeah. yeah, they they do um elongate their lines and, and there's a certain way in which the Kardashians speak in this kind of um, rhythmic way you know the, the melody of it is really intriguing it draws you in you know and it's um, it's interesting because it, it is kind of almost all the Kardashians that I seek as mm. you know and that's also because they're great actors so we're, I don't want to take anything away from that and just you know put it on the makeup these are great actors, but there's a way in which they talk and it's so inviting and it's so grand and dramatic, you know? Um, you know, if somebody uh, had never seen a Cardassian, but somehow had seen all the episodes with all the other aliens and they said, what are Cardassians like? I'd say they're cunning and sinister like Romulans, but with the eloquence of the Vorta, you know? Oh. Yeah, yeah, with the eloquence of the Vorta. The way they you kind know, of deliver things in this grandiose fashion and kind of halfway say something and you can't really take them on their word, you know? Yeah, it's a very, like, it's like a closing argument for a good lawyer, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but there's also another alien that was featured in this episode, the, the Dabo playing... Uh, Hellboy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, is that Hellboy? <laughs> <laughs> what was that? What was going on with his head? And uh, how come he wasn't, you know, do you know anything more about him, Ryan? Because I don't. I... Well, I'm glad you asked that question. Um, the answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> but I did because I was like, wow, that guy looks a lot like Hellboy. Like even the actor kind of did. But the fact that he had like those bumps on his head, you know, like the, the butt head. Yeah. Um, 